Hello, I'm Neil Inor. For most of us, an automatic telephone like this is a very familiar piece of equipment. It's essential for our daily living, for all our social and business contacts. Yet, for thousands of Australians living in the less settled parts of our vast continent, a reliable 24 hours a day, seven days a week telephone service still has to reach them. However, in a five-year program beginning in 1984-85, Telecom Australia will install digital radio concentrator systems as part of its commitment to give virtually all Australians, wherever they live, access to the National Telecommunications Network and to services equal to anything in the cities and major towns. In response to a telecom survey of the needs of the outback, one property owner may have said it all. His three greatest needs were a telephone, a telephone that works, and a telephone that works all the time. Tall office buildings which dominate the skyline and the hustle and bustle of the city with people rushing to and from work is a far cry people conduct their business and personal life. Business people in cities and towns are all dependent on Australia's $10,000 million telecommunications network. Modern telephone systems, telexes, and computer printouts are essential for business efficiency and success. Telecom's five-year rural and remote area program will provide people living in areas amounting to about two-thirds of Australia's land mass with similar facilities. The vast area shaded brown is that which Telecom will reach by using digital radio concentrator systems. Since 1975, Telecom has invested millions of dollars upgrading the country telephone network, reducing the number of manual services from almost 150,000 to just 27,000 in only nine years. It now faces the challenge of providing 24-hour a day automatic services to people living long distances from telephone exchanges. Of the more than $400 million Telecom will spend on its rural and remote area program, half or 200 million will be on digital radio concentrators. In 1983, Telecom began three field trials of digital radio concentrator systems in South Australia, the Northern Territory, and in Western Queensland, in an area based on Charleville. In the Charleville trial, automatic telephones were installed at telecom stations along the microwave link between Charleville and Kanamala to the south and at three grazing properties, which had manual telephone services, operating over part privately erected, or PPE lines. These are telephone lines built and maintained by the property owner from the end of the telecom construction. The private construction is usually shared by a number of landholders in a party line situation. One of the three charitable properties selected for the trial was Wallel where Richard and Sue Carey and their young family raised cattle and sheep. They'd had a reasonably satisfactory telephone service, albeit a manual one, over the years, by means of their well-kept PPE line. But in many other parts of Australia's inland, it's a marvel that the PPE lines work at all, let alone some of the time. Falling trees, fires, high winds, Land movements, heavy rain, floods and vegetation growth have all undermined the quality of the PPE network, which provides the means of telephone communication for thousands of Australians far removed from the cities and towns. The replacement of many farm labourers with machines resulted in a substantial deterioration of the privately owned lines. In seasonal downtimes, 
It was the job of farmhands to check, maintain and repair fences and telephone lines. Jobs now often neglected until breakages occur. Water is one of the greatest enemies of telephone transmission. Yet this line crossing a dam is an example of careless maintenance. Trees are effectively used as the basic construction for many PPE lines, but they do have a habit of growing. Lines nailed to saplings have been embedded in the trunks or forks as the trees have grown, distorting both the shapes of the trees and the telephone conversations along the lines. And an insulator on a pole is often an ideal base for some of the creatures of the bush to build their homes. This time, ants. Many an enterprising farmer has saved time and money by killing two birds with the one stone. The top barbed wire strand of this fence doubles as the last stretch of telephone line to the homestead. But there are other things which add to the marvel of the PPE network and how it still manages to work. For example, joins where lines are broken. Generally, it's some very basic twists and knots to restore transmission. But even a dog chain can be effective where the ends of a line cannot be stretched together. These were the sorts of problems faced when a working party was established at Telecom headquarters in Melbourne in 1978 with the task to devise, within only a month, a concept for automation of telephone services in rural and remote areas. That concept also had to acknowledge Telecom's charter as set out in the Australian Telecommunications Commission Act of 1975, which, among other things, requires that Telecom shall perform its functions in such a manner as will best meet the social, industrial and commercial needs of the Australian people make its telecommunication services available throughout Australia for all people who reasonably require those services, while having regard to the need to operate its services as efficiently and economically as practicable, and the special needs for telecommunication services of Australian people who reside or carry on business outside the cities. In August 1978, I set up a small working group uh, consisting of uh, Jeff Champion, uh, Jack Steele and John Burton to establish the possibility of providing a system design for a VHF, UHF digital radio system to serve the needs of remote and rural subscribers in Australia. It was to be uh, completely automatic to provide normal telephone service and some data service and capable of solar powering. The working party concluded there were no systems in use or being developed overseas which met Australia's specific needs. It was essential that digital technology be used to maintain transmission quality over long distances through series of repeaters. The equipment was going to be a digital nature, right, so it would be regenerative repeaters, so there's no real limit. Right. But we will have difficulty in the um, building out the time differences, the propagation differences between the different subscribers. We'll do that with delay, presumably. That's right. Each of the now, system. once you make a decision as to um, what that maximum distance is going to be, that means that each subscriber will have to build, be built out to that maximum delay. Low power consumption and solar generation were vital because conventional power was not available in most of the areas to be serviced. Automatic monitoring of performance had to be provided from a base station, such as a telephone exchange. And any system had to be economical compared to alternatives, such as high-cost underground cabling or higher-cost satellite technology. Final acceptance by telecom of the digital radio concentrator system was given in 1979, provided the first production systems were available in 1984-85. Worldwide tenders for field trial equipment were called and a contract let in 1981. Engineers evaluated the equipment and further tests were conducted by Telecom in Melbourne, including environmental tests in oven temperatures as high as 55 degrees Celsius. 
Richard and Sue Kerry and their family share with many others in rural Australia the problems of isolation and a standard of communications well below those in the cities and towns. Although only 33 kilometres from Charleville, a grazing community of 3,800 people, the Kerries face typical remote area problems. Their mail comes only twice a week, which is more frequent than for many outback properties, but still requires them to collect it at a rail siding several kilometres away. They get no daily newspapers, but they do receive national television and the local commercial radio station. A station which does recognise at least one of the problems with PPE telephone lines. This is South West Queensland's 4VL. It's 10 to 8, time to play What Am I for Claire's Foodland. And this morning we'll be taking party line calls only because yesterday the automatic dialers beat our country listeners to the punch. So let's hear from you now on 541 444. And there's that familiar problem for rural telephone users. They can't get through. Number, please. Uh, could I have a Melbourne number? 2114787. Melbourne 2114787. Mm -hmm. What is your number, please? Uh, Kaladi 15D. Kaladi 15D. The lines are busy. There is a 90 minute delay. Uh, would, you would you like me to call you back? Yeah, thank you. Thank you. But the digital radio concentrator system answers the Kerry's biggest communication need. A fully automatic and reliable telephone service 24 hours a day, seven days a week, with full STD facilities. It's a vital link when running a 36,300 hectare property and keeping in touch with two other family properties several hundred kilometres away. For Sue, farming in Australia's outback is a long way from her days as an air hostess, teacher and public relations officer. Wallel is also a long way from her capital city-based family. Extensive microwave system installations spreading tentacle-like into the inland are providing the basic network for Telecom's rural and remote area program. Digital radio concentrator systems will feed into this network. Customers will receive an automatic telephone service either by cable from a nearby repeater or by radio to their property up to 50 kilometres from a repeater. Each DRCS will serve up to 80 customers as far as 600 kilometres from a telephone exchange. The systems have three main components. Repeater units receive, regenerate and retransmit signals without any loss in quality. Exchange units provide signalling, control functions and interconnection to the national network. And subscriber units consist of digital radio transceivers located in equipment boxes fixed to the antenna masts. A small array of solar panels connected to the mast provides power to recharge the batteries which operate the necessary equipment to set up, transmit and receive calls. The equipment box is also able to house equipment for additional telecommunications, such as telex and data, where customers require them. Subscriber units to be installed in Australia will have some minor physical changes to those used in the trials, and cable to premises will generally be laid underground. With their new automatic telephone being installed, the Kerry family had explained to them how it works by one of Telecom's many service advisors. The first thing you're going to find different about your new STD system is the fact that you're going to have to lift the handpiece before you can dial the number you want. Unlike your old one where you left your handpiece on and wound the handle to get the operator. Such things as dial and busy tones are strange noises to people who've only had a manual telephone. The second thing you're going to find is that you're going to hear tones. Now the tone you hear when you lift your handpiece is dial tone. If you don't get dial tone, it means you can't ring out. Area codes and STD charging on a time basis, rather than rates for three minutes with manually connected trunk calls, need to be understood with an automatic service. And now we'll 
how will we still get the at the monthly dockets? Your calls will be entered on your telephone account as metered calls. Telecom will use digital radio concentrator systems to replace 5,000 of the 27,000 manual telephone services existing in Australia in mid-1984. An estimated 5,000 additional services will also be provided through DRCS to areas previously out of reach of the telecommunications network and whose only link in emergencies is through the Royal Flying Doctor Radio Service. This massive program requires lots of planning, lots of engineering and technical expertise, and lots of money. Telecom estimates the average cost of each individual telephone service provided by Digital Radio Concentrator will be $20,000. A lot of money compared to about $2,000 for a city service, but considerably quicker and cheaper than cable routes which would cost as much as $60,000 for some remote services. Customers will only be required to pay a small percentage of this, that is, the rural connection charges applying at the time. It's in line with Telecom's charter and the findings of the Davidson Inquiry into telecommunications services in Australia in 1983, which said that metropolitan services cross-subsidise country services and customers close to exchanges cross-subsidise customers remote from exchanges. About 150 digital radio concentrator systems will be installed starting in 1984 at E5 and towering repeater masts, each of them 60 metres high, will be built at a rate of two a week over the next five years. Telecom's advanced technology and its commitment to a fully automated network by 1990 will give people in rural and remote areas a telephone service equal to anything in the cities and equal to that of the Kerry family of Wallel near Charleville. Oh, Mum. Oh. <laughs> I'm ringing out of hours. You've lost your snuffle. I didn't oh. recognise you. <laughs> I'm, on, I'm on the fancy new phone. Not just wrong with press button. the new number? No, 541643. 1643. 0764. 5614. No, 0745416643. So you'll be able to um, ring me anytime you like. Just dial it direct, just like you do anyway. Yeah, it's lovely. <laughs> 